Uh, I would like to welcome Pablo as our next speaker who graduated as a biochemist at Science School, Universidad de la Republica, Montevideo, Uruguay, working on gene expression regulation of protozoal parasites. During his postdoc uh, studies, he became interested in computational biology, using it to research aspects of the molecular biology of parasitic protozoa and flatworms. Ultimately, during his PhD at PDCIBA Uruguay, in collaboration with the University of Maryland, USA, he began applying transcriptomics, translatomics, and structural genomics. Pablo is an associate professor at the genomics department at IIBCE and at the Molecular Interactions Laboratory Science School, Universidad de la Republica. Uh, welcome, Pablo. We're excited to hear your talk. Hello, everyone. My name is Pablo Smircic. I will start by uh, thanking the organizers for the opportunity to present some of our cells here today. I will tell you um, some of our results that we have obtained in the last few months regarding the analysis of ribosomal protein expression at the single cell level in neurons. Uh, so why would this be relevant for uh, ribosomal proteins? So historically, even though historically the ribosome has been seen as an homogeneous complex, Recent papers like, like the one shown here by Slavov and collaborators show that the stoichiometry of the ribosomal proteins in the cell is not one-to-one -one as one would expect. So there are some proteins which are overrepresented when compared to the rest, and this uh, varies and generates different um, ribosomal compositions. Moreover, results by the group of Berna suggest that, that these uh, different ribosomes may be regulating the translation of different mRNA pools. So uh, these uh, different ribosome compositions may have an important role in translation regulation in the, in the cell. And apart from all this, we have known uh, since many years now that um, many ribosomal proteins have extra ribosomal functions, which may also explain the overrepresentation of certain uh, ribosomal proteins in the cell. Um, so, by analyzing signal neuron transcriptomes, we aim to describe which ribosomal protein mRNAs are more variable between uh, neuronal subgroups. And uh, why neurons? So this has two main reasons. Uh, first, there is almost an historical one, which is that uh, our department, and uh, mainly the head of the department and the person who is coordinating this project, Dr. Jose Sotelo, has been interested in for many years in the study of gene expression and localized translation in neurons. And also we have a, um, a biological reason, which is that neurons are considering, con considered the most diverse class of cells, and this makes them especially interesting to be studied by single cell RNA-seq because of the capacity of this method to detect, uh, to detect uh, subtypes of cells. So our specific aim, as you can read here, is that we want to analyze the differential expression of mRNAs coding for ribosomal proteins among different uh, neuronal subtypes. So we want to answer if neurons have a heterogeneous expression of ribosomal proteins genes and how this relates to uh, neuronal subtypes. For that, we are currently analyzing single cell RNA-seq uh, data from the mice uh, cortex, which is uh, publicly available and was published in the year 2018 by TASIC and collaborators. 
So uh, this is a big project carried out at the Allen Institute where they uh, sequence the mice, bra the mice brain primary visual cortex and the anterolateral motor cortex using uh, the smart set to uh, technology. This data was obtained from almost 400 mice and it adds to uh, 24,000 cells. And after analysis, what you get is around 1.8 uh, million map reads per cell, and you can detect around 10,000 10, uh, genes per cell. So to reanalyze this data, we use the CERAT uh, package pipeline and starting from the read counts, we uh, estimated special levels after normalization. And uh, using the classification performed by the authors of the Allen Allen Institute, we could uh, do um, dimensionality reduction uh, by PCA or EMAP. And we did this either using all the variable genes or just the ribosomal proteins to get the results. And also we studied differential expression of uh, ribosomal proteins between the neuronal uh, subtypes. So moving into the results, uh, what you see when you uh, plot uh, a UMAP based on highly variable genes, uh, you can clearly distinguish between the two main classes of neurons. This is Gavarshik and Yutamatarshik neurons, uh, which uh, can be uh, clearly seen here. But interestingly, when we perform UMAP analysis, based only on ribosomal protein gene expression, instead of using all the hardware uh, genes, we can also see a specific clustering of the two main classes of neurons, as you can see here. So even though uh, this separation is so obviously not as good as the one you get when you consider all the genes, the expression profile of ribosomal protein alone is sufficient to differentiate between the two main classes of uh, neurons. So uh, TASIC and collaborators were able to define 24 subclasses of, of neurons and more than 100 clusters uh, within this, uh, this data. These are the subclasses which are defined by uh, neuronal markers. And when we cluster, uh, the median expression uh, profile of ribosomal proteins in each cell group, we observe that uh, this groups cells by class and subclass. See here we have uh, the class, here we have the subclass, and this further suggests that there is a specific expression of these ribosomal mRNAs across the neuronal subtypes. So after establishing that ribosomal protein mRNA expression is characteristic of uh, neuron types, we set to analyze the differential expression pattern at the three different levels of uh, classification, that is class, subclass, and clusters. And what we see uh, in the table here is that when you um, do differential expression analysis, uh, comparing the two classes uh, to big classes of neurons, you don't see any differential expression of uh, ribosomal proteins. So, uh, however, when you analyze at the subclass uh, level, we begin to observe differentially expressed uh, ribosomal protein mRNAs. So many of them are found differentially expressed at least once which is the numbers shown uh, here. And uh, when you move to the cluster uh, level, what you see is that at this um, cutoff of 1.5 fold change, actually all of them 
are uh, differentially expressed between groups uh, at least uh, once. So these results, uh, besides confirming that ribosomal protein mRNAs are differentially expressed among subtypes, we think that it clearly shows the benefits of single cell analysis and the cellular subclassification that it allows to tackle this type of uh, biological question. Also, even though uh, both at the subclass and at the cluster level, we see that there are several ribosomal protein genes being differentially expressed at least once, some of them are found in a, are found differential in a higher number of comparisons. We think that these proteins, which are consi consistently found uh, as differential expressed in many comparisons, are good candidates for further proteomic analysis. For example, when we focus on one of them, uh, which is the RPL, RPL21 uh, ribosomal protein, you see that there is a high expression in gaba uh, neurons, mostly in the lambda 5 subclass. And uh, while we were working on this data, it became uh, available data generated by uh, the chromium technology for the same brain regions. So we decided to include it in the analysis to compare with the smart set results we already had. So uh, this data that got consisted of uh, 64,000 cells with 30,000 uh, 30, aligned UMIs and 4,000 uh, 4, genes detected uh, per cell. While uh, we observed a modest general correlation for the ribosomal proteins mRNA levels, which is of around uh, 0.5 Sperman uh, correlation coefficient, we do get consistent results for some of the mRNAs. For example, uh, for this same protein, RPL21, um, that we showed that it had a high expression in the lamp 5 uh, sub, uh, subtype, we see the same results with the uh, chromium uh, technology. So just to summarize, uh, ribosomal protein mRNA expression is heterogeneous and specific of neuronal subtypes. Some ribosomal protein mRNAs are more variable among subclasses. And the mRNA coding for RP21 <coughs> is consistently found uh, differentially expressed, uh, which makes it uh, a good candidate for further experiments. Finally, I would like to name the team working on this project. Uh, the analysis were performed by Joaquin Garat, a talented master's student, and was coordinated by Dr. Jose Sotelo. The work was done at the Clemente Stalin Institute in Montevideo. And you are most welcome to visit our nice city, but at least at the if and when COVID allows it. So with this, I will be happy, happy to uh, answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Pablo. Looks like we have a couple questions coming in on Slido. Uh, so our, our first question is a, is, a, uh, is a, it's got a couple pieces to it. So I'll read the full thing out and then and start with the first piece then. Um, so uh, the full question is, are the RPs similar to each other at nucleotide level? If so, do you think single cell transcriptomics will be able to distinguish them? And how much can we trust on the specificity of gene annotation from the reads? So going back to the first part, yeah. are the RPs similar to each other at the nucleotide level? Uh, well, uh, we actually look at that because we were surprised that the correlations uh, between SmartSeq2 and, and, and Chromium was not that high. So we want to see uh, if there was something going on there, but actually they are not that OK. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so um, we are actually not seeing uh, a, a, an issue in that, in that sense. So we do not think that that's, that's the problem, actually. They are not very similar. It, they are around, you know, 20% uh, 
uh, similar or something like that. It's, it's, it's not an issue. Um, and the second part, if so, oh, well, yeah. it's related. Yeah. yeah. So no, uh, we don't. Yeah, we we actually do, and uh, and they are not that uh, similar. And then, uh, and is that also comments on how much we can trust on the specificity of gene annotation from the reads? Um, you mean uh, how well are ribosomal proteins annotated, or uh, is that it? Well, I mean, uh, they are quite well characterized. I mean, they are, they are uh, you know, ribosomal proteins are, have been studied since you know many years now, so the the, the annotation is quite good. Um, yeah. And uh, as a last question, I'd be really excited to hear about what your future directions are for this work. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, we have a really specific question here, which is uh, related to translation and, and translation control. So we are using uh, uh, single cell, cell data as a tool, actually, you know. So uh, uh, I think that, that the future perspective has more to do with that. And then we would like to do, for example, more like proteomic analysis uh, mm -hmm. of uh, neurons and um, to do, for example, uh, ribosome uh, pull down, you know, mm -hmm. yep. to see if we can uh, actually uh, see the same results using uh, protein levels that what we saw using uh, using mRNA levels with, with single cell. So I would think that's an interesting uh, perspective to confirm that in, in proteomics. And uh, also, we, you know, we, we are using neurons because because of of, of, of this huge, you know, uh, diversity they have. But you can, um, I mean, this might have um, implications in other cell types. So it would be interesting to look at any other uh, data set, you know, and, and, and to see if this uh, holds, you know. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it sounds exciting. Uh, Pablo, thank, thank you, you so much, much for presenting. Yes, definitely. And uh, thank you.